Right. Right. right, Lucy. Lucy, good morning. Good morning. Leo, good morning. Good morning. Now, you guys have just been on a project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Lucy, what I'd like you to do, can you just tell us about that project first? So the project is a short film um, which came up with the idea and I've gathered a crew, cast and crew of Watersit Creatives, uh, which includes this young man right here. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, we've basically collaborated to write a script, rehearse, and film it, and we've just done our first day filming, and I think it went really well. I'm surprised how well it went, so it's a lot to take on, directing and acting in it as well, but so far I'm very pleased with myself. What about you, Leo? How, how do you think it went? I think it went really well as a character of Jack. The way he he's a very supportive person and also a good promoter to the open mic, and also very nice to Ellie. Yeah. Herself. And I'm, always, I'm very happy as a character that Ellie th th did a great deed of an act in this open mic and yeah. I should be proud of myself. Yeah, definitely. Good. I mean, what, what's interesting is, as I say, you, you're both neurodivergent, yeah? yeah. Before you, you actually wrote this loose, yeah. yeah, where did the little story come from? That's a good question. I think the little story, now that I'm thinking back to it, and I think I told you that a while back, like during college, when I went to back in college, we um, each had our little roles in our class, and I get it, not everyone is going to fit everyone in the industry, but I feel like I've not got that chance to fully shine other than doing pantomime, which was quite good to be fair, I love a good panto, who doesn't? But I think other projects outside of it, I haven't really had that chance to shine personally. So I just wanted to show them that I do have white takes and yeah, basically prove everyone wrong if they've thought that. Yeah, what about you, Leo? Because I mean, you, you, you not before, because you, you're famous in your own right, mm. That's right. aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what was the film you were on? I was on that film, major Netflix film, I used to be famous, which which hit globally. Brilliant. It was amazing, wasn't it? It was extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, what, what the, the thing... Well, okay, before we get into that, so t how did that come about? It came about really well as my character of Stevie, who is, who is an autistic drummer, who is, who is in Peckham, being friends with Vince, who is, a, who is an ex-rock star of Stereo Dream. Yeah. And they both play together as a band in a pub, but it doesn't fit in really well at the pub because of the, the baddie who, who started heckling Stevie. And then after that, Stevie is trying his very best to promote a gig for Vince to do it again. And then Stevie wants to go separate ways to go to the music school and Vince wants to play the tour. And after that, they both meet again at the end and play. Wow, excellent. But you're not from this type of an industry, are you? Yeah. You know, how did, was it mum, was it dad? How, how, did, how did you get the actual gig itself? Yeah, how, how, did we, how did it came about? How did you get the role of Stevie? Did so, you... I'll tell you how I get the role. Actually, the nationwide search from an acting, the casting director named Isabella Dolphin, who, who spots me playing music and acting and playing drums at the same time. Because you are actually a musician, aren't you? Yes, I am. What's your forte? I mean, mezzo forte, piano, fortissimo. Fortissimo! There you go. <laughs> I love it. What about the drums though? Did you have to do much practice? I've been doing drums when I was six years old in St. Lawrence School. So it was a bit more like riding a bike? Yeah. When you had to get to it? Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. So what, I, what I'd like to know is, yeah, why do you think that you actually was right for that role? Yeah, why they picked you. Why they picked you? I think I have the charisma 
of my act. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. You are very, very honest. Yeah. Aren't you? Well, that's it, it, it's lovely. It's in our blood. We're meant to be blunt anyway. I know. Well, I, I mean, it, it, it is interesting, you know, with the, all the neurodivergent, um, yeah. the spectrum that you're on, yeah? You know, everybody's got their own little trait. Yeah. What would you say your, your best trait is? I think my best trait would be routine, planning out. I used to plan out weekly. Now I plan out daily because obviously now that I've got an agent... Um, if there's like a self tape that's sent in like on the day and yeah. what it kind of my week, it does get overwhelming and I've had that uh, for a certain BBC show and it just it just went horribly wrong. Oh right. Um, well I wasn't prepared personally, but I received since I got my agent in October, I received two tapes from them and I managed to work my way around it. I haven't heard anything about some like I says I've not got anything, but the way I dealt with that change has improved massively. But yeah, I think routine would be the main trait. What's your main trait, Leo? So my main trait is being disciplined, more routineable, and I just have my brain for only one way to me to go forward. And and disciplinary for me really makes me want to go forward in life. Good, good. Because I mean you, you actually got a bit of advice, didn't you? Yeah. From Ed Scribe. He he advised me to be disciplined for a reason on set. Thank you, Ed. Because, I mean, Ed, Ed, that came through, didn't it, at the weekend? Mm. You know? Yeah. You were very disciplined. Yeah. Tell us how the, how the chemistry worked on, on set. I thought it was brilliant. Like, I, I knew when I picked you, it, we were going to have a lot of fun. Um, but you say that, but how? Was it, was it a sense that you had? It, I, it's just a sort of feeling. Sometimes I get this feeling where I thought... It's on. Like when I see like shows like Britain's Got Talent or real other reality shows, I see certain acts and I'm like, oh my god. And I'll tell you for an example. Um, there was someone called um, Musa Mota who is a dancer. He was part of the Peaky Blinders dance show in Birmingham. And he's got an amputee after losing his leg to cancer at a young age. But the way he got through it and found his way through dancing, because he used to play football, my goodness me. And he got the group. The first ever judge has gone buzzer because of it. I wanted him to win. I'm so gutted he didn't because someone else who was questionable mm. won it. But it's just moments like that where I'm like, yes, 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 yes. But mm. it's just a sort of feeling for me, for me personally. Leo, what do you reckon's uh, on the cards for you? What's what's the next job? Do you think? So my next job on the cards is Clara and the Sun, and it's to be cast be casted so I'm just waiting to get a recall around nearly to the end of January so I'm, I'm pretty excited and fingers and toes crossed I hope I get the job now what I cannot believe is this people say if you're on that spectrum no matter where you are on that spectrum mm -hmm. yeah people have this this idea that it, it's not possible for anybody on the spectrum to function in a normal way. And what is normal? Who knows? I have no idea. Um, all I can say to you is this. I mean, I've been doing film work for a long, long time and theatre, blah, blah, blah. Yesterday for me, yeah. watching all you guys come together, you are so caring of everybody. You know, anything that was going uh, was going slightly uh, awry. I don't think nothing went wrong completely. Well, no, we had technical though, didn't we? No. Yeah, it was only the that technical. Was but that didn't phase you, did it? Well, it, 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 it did. I don't think it showed it if it did. I, I saw that it's because the text, the text normally the main side of it anyway. It is. Not us actors. Like, we did a good job, I think. But, but I think the thing for me was uh, the point I'm trying to make there. You were all level headed. Nobody panicked. Nobody threw a strop. Nobody got angry. Possibly. It was just taken in your stride. And if we did it, we did it. If we couldn't get there, we would try our damnedest to get you know get it sorted. Because we were on a tight schedule, weren't we? How, 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 yeah, we were. Yeah. How, how long did we have? So, oh, so, so, so we originally aid to start aid start at one, and we got everything on track for that. Um. So as we got upstairs, it took longer than expected to set up. And then when we were changing stuff, it took longer then because 
think batteries were dead with the cameras. We had to change lighting, <coughs> move furniture. But once we got the tape shot, it was like easy peasy and squeezy. Mm. So we had until 8 o'clock, but we finished an hour early, and like an hour earlier because, well, obviously, I think there was someone who couldn't turn mm. up. Um, so that sort of reduced the time a little bit. But no, good. Yeah, other than that. So let, let's let's take it to the next level because yeah. the young man next to you has been in a Netflix, his big budget film. Yeah. What was it like being on, on set? So, that's my first time actor. I, in this on the set of I Used to Be Famous, I, it was a lovely atmosphere. Ed Scrine, Eleanor Matsura, always caring about my autism. She played your mum, didn't she? Yeah, she Eleanor. did play them. Yeah, Eleanor played Amber. Yeah, yeah your mum, yeah. yeah. They're she both was... really kind and got me admired to become a future actor. And I felt so, so welcomed and... Excellent. And Isn't that lovely? Indeed. What was it, so, I mean, Ed gave you one piece of advice, you know, with the discipline, yeah? Mm. Did he give you anything else? Oh. Just, um, just one advice is just say be disciplined, as yeah. he said. Have you got, um, have you got an open uh, invitation to go back to him at any time if if you need anything? Oh yeah, actually, I think I did. I mean, when I was actually when I finished off the studio doing headshots, Ed Scrine in, invited us to 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 a. Uh, a cafe where we just had lunch together between me and Ed and my parents. So oh, nice. We just we spoke and s spoke ever since we filmed it. I used to be famous. And, and so you saw what we did yesterday. Um, what was it like for you? Because I mean, was it was it all the stopping and starting like we had? It's like that stopping and starting, but actually, the takes are much more longer. It's around at least each scene six. For four to six takes, four to okay. six takes with a break and then with a lunch and dinner. Yeah. And we just just be on set non-stop and do filming. Yeah. So you've got you've got two different worlds there, haven't you? You got you know big budget, and then you got low budget. Yeah. Which do you prefer? Oh, I don't want to make it too biased. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take the compliment. I don't want to be too biased. Don't, don't worry about it. Maybe both. You're a, you're a, a, you're a, you're a diplomat. Reasons. Yeah. So we like to sound like both stage and screen for different reasons. Because with stage, you could be like, very flamboyant. You can shout from the top of your lungs. Whereas with screen, it's very natural. And depending on the camera angles, you can go, raise your voice. Yeah. It's far. Depends on your mic. Where yes. your mic is, the type yes. of shot you're in. Yeah. It's very close. You could just talk normally and like at nothing and not, but, well... Bothered, but yeah, it's actually knowing what shot you're in, yeah. uh, and you know, for your angles and everything else. Yeah. Um, what's the next step for you, though, Luce? Well, I was—I just, just said that to Leah when you were—we were talking amongst ourselves. Um, obviously, to meet new people like Leah himself, um, and to seek new opportunities as and when I can. Um, obviously, bag that first TV gig, either on Corey Hollyoaks or Doctor Support finishes in March. Uh, how debatable is that? You never know. Yeah. Um, well, because 14 words on Hollyoaks, I find it out, pays one grand, and everything else is just profit. So, one line on one of the soaps for a grand, sign me up. <laughs> um, yeah. And again, I think, again, just making my work because if nothing's coming for you, get the work, make it to get the work. There was yeah. someone on Twitter who did sketch during lockdown. Massive reason because of that. He's been in numerous of things. So he's been in Panto, a musical, and recently just been on for Netflix. So just goes to show. So yeah. yeah, continue creating my own work, which I feel like I am doing. Yeah, and you've done it. You've done it. Excellent. Yeah. Absolutely excellent. And there is something else linking to Autism Acceptance Week, which I'm planning on the cards as well. Yeah. Um, I just need to find the uh, early stages for that. Yeah. And then. Yeah, see where it goes. All right, good. Well, Leo, would you consider writing and directing and, and all that type of stuff or what? I mean, in the future, by um, eight, around the uh, late ages of my life, I will do a bit of directing. 
plus acting at the same time. And mm. Mm. So what message have we got that you can both give to um, other autistic people? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, I think the message I would give is, yeah, there are going to be people who say that they can't do it, but, but just ignore them. Like, they've got nothing better. I'm going to be honest here, controversial, which a lot of people might not agree with. It's probably because they've got nothing better to do with their life and they're probably jealous because we people like, no, people like this sounds wrong, but the way working hard to get to where we are and people think it's just an easy ball game, it isn't. It's going to be hard and you are going to have to work for it, but as long as you work, you work hard, be patient and you're passionate about it, then anything is possible. You know, work hard, be patient and be passionate about it. Leo, what do you reckon? <laughs> Well, I'd say to all people with neurodi- as you, as you, who are neurodiverse or autistic, do not be hard done by. Be, be, be for what you are. Keep, keep going. You never give up. And also, also, you really need the whole team for your whole family to work for you. So, do not give up. That's one one thing that's that is excellent advice. Thank you very much, the pair of you. I mean, the one thing for me is, uh, I, I I've got to be honest with you. All right, yeah. I didn't think, Lucy, when we ventured on this little project, okay. that you would be able to um, okay. reach out to everybody. Neither did I. Bring everybody together. Neither did I. Create that script. Neither did I. Look at the way you directed and you brought everybody exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's just absolutely so. With regards to you know, people thinking one way about you know, neurodivergent people, mm. we need to nip that in the bud, don't we? Aye. Because let's be fair about it, you guys, in my mind, excelled in everything that you did on that set yesterday. And bringing it all together, you know, it was just, um, I've never been on a set like that, mm. you know, and I've been on a few, you know, just to see everybody, it was, it was absolutely cracking. Um, so I just hope that, <laughs> yeah, mm. I hope that you can keep the projects coming. Mm. Have you got more writing in mind or what? I did actually write a little draft, like only a shorter thing, but I'll give you a hint. It's basically something about dating the autistic, well, from an autistic's point of view. Sort of like a speed dating, but from an autistic point of view. Yeah, yeah. I've literally just noted it down in draft form on the phone. Notes on my phone. You've seen first dates, have you? Oh, I've seen first dates, yeah. Not for a while, but I've seen clips of it on right. like Dogger Box. Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, I'm writing something to send it to the BBC Writers Room, <coughs> excuse me, with the deadline being in April. I've nearly finished the first draft. Um, I just need to get some opinions to make sure everything's fine. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mentioned about autism at Sexton's Week, about yeah. going into my workplace for like a presentation, and also mentioned about a passion show, which I've told you about as mm. well. Uh, still in early stages, whether mm. that'll happen or not is another question. But it's basically just to say, here I am, this is what I do, this is what I like. If you've got a skill, show it. If not, just talk about it. Would you agree with that, Leo? Yeah, I really agree with that. I mean, she... She put on a lot of work on the writing and you worked your socks off, Lucy. Thank you.